Good morning. It is Thursday, the 9th of April, 2020, and it's a day that we call Monday Thursday. Today on the television on the news, you will see what well, you would have normally seen if it hadn't been for this pandemic, the Queen going out and handing Monday money to various people. What is more important this day is a day where we remember Jesus washing the feet of his disciples and we also remember him instituting communion where he took the bread and wine at the Passover with his friends that he celebrated with and he passed the cup and the bread around and said do this in remembrance of me and then he, they sung psalms and they went out to the garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was arrested. So shall we settle ourselves down? <coughs> Excuse me. And then we will start morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. The next part is the opening prayer that can be said. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set off our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. There are two psalms set for this morning, Psalm 42 and Psalm 43. If you want to pause, pause me and go and grab your Bible, we could say them together. Normally, Alternate verses are said, so I would say verse 1 and you would say verse 2. As I'm here on my own, I'll read the whole thing. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread, day and night. While all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God. For I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, and from Hermon, and the hills of Mizar. Deep calls to deep, in the thunder of your waterfalls, as your breakers and waves have gone over me. And the Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. For the night his song will be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crushed my bones, my enemies mock me. While all day long they say to me, where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Come, Creator Spirit, source of life. Sustain us when our hearts are heavy, and our wells have run dry. For you are the Father's gift. With him who is our living water, Jesus Christ our Lord. Psalm 43 Give judgment for me, O God, 
and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked, for you are the God of my refuge. Why have you cast me from you? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? O oh, send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me, and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, that I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. And on the lyre I will give thanks to you, O oh God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? I put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Come, Creator Spirit, light and truth. Bring us to the altar of life and renew our joy and gladness in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we normally say at the end of the psalm, or the group of psalms, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The first of our two readings is here. The first one is from Leviticus chapter 16. It starts at verse 2 and ends at verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron not to come just at any time into the sanctuary inside the curtain before the mercy seat that is upon the ark, or he will die. For I appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen tunic and shall have the linen undergarments next to his body. Fasten the linen sash and wear the linen turban. These are the holy vestments. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. He shall take from the congregation of the people of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron, Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Aaron shall cast lots on the two goats, a lot for the Lord and the other lot for Azeel. Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and offer it as a sin offering for the goat on which the lot for Azil shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness of Azil. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall slaughter the bull as a sin offering for himself. He shall take a censer full of coals from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of crushed sweet incense and he shall bring it inside the curtain and put the incense on the fire before the Lord so that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the covenant or he will die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. He shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring its blood inside the curtain, and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, sprinkling it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the sanctuary, because of the uncleanliness of the people of Israel and because of their transgressions of their sins. And so shall so he shall do for the tent of meeting, which remains with them in the midst of their uncleanliness. No one shall be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the sanctuary until he comes out, 
and made atonement for himself and for his house and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement on its behalf and shall take some of the blood of the bull and the blood of the goat and put it on each of the horns of the altar. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanliness of the people of Israel. When he has finished atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. Then Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions, all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and sending it away into the wilderness by means of someone designated for the task. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to a barren region, and the goat shall be set free in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall enter the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen vestments that he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. He shall bathe his body in water in a holy place and put on his vestments. Then he shall come out and offer his burnt offering and the sin offering of the people, making atonement for himself and for the people. This is the word of the Lord. There is so much in that reading. It struck me about Aaron going in, making himself clean, and then putting on clean linen. It made me think of the priest at church when he goes in, takes off his outer coat, takes a moment or two to consider what he is going to do on a Sunday morning, he prays, and then places over himself the robes for the service. And when the service is over, he goes out and takes those robes off. But also I could see there and almost smell the incense. I love incense. It's a beautiful smell. I know it makes people choke and cough sometimes, but it is a beautiful smell and has so much history behind it as well. And when I smell it, it makes me think of church and of prayer and of faith. And then the sin offerings. We have confession when we go to church and confess our sins and acknowledge that we are not perfect. And here in this reading, we have the two goats. One is made an offering to the Lord and the other is set free in the wilderness. And we are set free to sin no more. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23. It's verses 1 to 25. We have been reading through and we have come to the place where Jesus is brought before Pilate. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying himself that he is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for any accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. When he learnt that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him 
and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood there, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. The same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other before they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and I have not found this man guilty of any charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, for the one who had been in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is the canticle which is said, We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Benedictus, the Song of Zachariah. Christ loved those who were his and showed them how deep was his love for them. Blessed be the Lord of God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets of God old, through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
And so we turn to our prayers, our intercessions. It may be for the day and the tasks ahead, or perhaps even the lack of tasks due to this pandemic. I know many people have cleaned their ovens, washed their windows, tidied their books, sorted their clothes. They are doing tasks to keep themselves occupied. And we need to consider the world and its needs. And also the church and her life. And particularly at this time, let us pray for the, the staff at Diocesan House in Canterbury. And then the worldwide church. And for many who are oppressed and have no judgment or any peace, think of those who are lonely particularly in this pandemic where they are locked in and isolated. Be with those who are near to death, who are in hospital beds and they cannot be surrounded by their loved ones. They are surrounded by doctors and nurses, the medical staff. Thank you for their compassion and their kindness at this time. And with all of those who are facing loss. There then may be many other prayers on your heart. So pause me and take the time to lift these to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This is the collect for Monday Thursday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May Christ who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wish you a good day. I hope the videos that you are seeing on Facebook and where we are sending the links in the emails around are helpful to you. If you have any comments or criticisms or concerns you would like to raise, please do not hesitate to phone one of the ministry team. You will find our numbers in the magazine. Uh, give us a call, send us an email, or pop a comment in Facebook and we'll pick that up as well. Take care. God bless.